Our dear viewers and listeners, we greet you all in the wonderful and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to today's Bible study. And I, before we begin the word of in, to delve into the word of God. Let's dedicate this moment to God in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Yes, Lord. We welcome your presence. Yes, Lord. We welcome the spirit of revelation. Yes, Lord. Open these truths to us, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. Imprint them on our hearts. Yes, Lord. Cause us to respond to them. Yes, Lord. That we might run with this fire of the gospel. Yes, Lord. To all the four corners of this world. Yes, Lord. That we might bring in the harvest. Yes, Lord. To the praise and glory of your name. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. As we come towards the end of this interesting book, there is still a lot more that we want to bring to your attention. And today's text will be taken from the book of Revelation chapter 20. From verse 11 to verse 15. Let's go there and see what the Bible says. John writes and says, Then I saw a great white throne. And him who sat on it. From whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead. Small and great. Standing before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works. By the things which were written in the books, the sea gave up the dead who were in it. And death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. This is a solemn occasion. It is not a moment of rejoicing. It is a moment of judgment. And often we don't want to talk about judgment. As a matter of fact, I found out that many non-believers, even believers, the quote that we, or the scripture that we like to quote most is do not judge. Why? Because we are in all, we are in fear of judgment. But judgment is God's method of delivering justice. Back to the text that we read. Here we see a book open. 
Here we see books being unveiled. It is amazing that everyone's life is compared to a book. Your life and my life is a book that is in progress. And you and I are the individual authors of that book. So don't think it is only the prominent people that are writing autobiographies. You and I that are alive right now are writing the books of our lives. With the way that we live, with the way that we speak, with the kind of life that we choose and the choices that we make in life. So it doesn't come as a surprise that books are used in the text that we see with regard to spiritual matters. Now, in the spiritual matters, there are three kinds of books. And we will look at them briefly. But then zero in on one. The first Ones are the books that record God's will for us and God's mind for us in this life. God has made it certain that his will for our eyes, that his mind concerning our destiny is carefully documented. And when you read throughout the pages of history, every attempt that has been made to try and lock up this book has been ultimately frustrated. Why? Because God wants you to know what his will for your life is. And this is contained in the books of the Bible. As one man put it, the Bible is God's manual for us on how to live life. And in here are contained two kinds of narratives. There is the descriptive which describes the events as they accurately happen. And then there is the prescriptive narrative which provides you with what you should do. How you should go through the valleys of life. How you are ever, ever going to overcome the storms that come your way. And how you are going to climb over the mountains that stand before you. Basically, God wants you to understand that there is a manual for your life. And that has been clearly documented. So your life should conform to what God's design for your life is. So God has a plan and he has documented that plan. So don't allow your emotions. Don't allow the circumstances of life to lead or hold the narrative for the way you conduct your life. Your life should be guided 
by God's word. And God's word is contained in books. And these are the books of the Bible. Now the second set of books are the set of books that record everything that we do. They record the deeds that we perform. So you and I, even as we speak right now, you are causing something to be written down concerning your life. By everything you think, everything you say and everything you do. So somebody may say, everything I think, yes. You see, Jesus put it for us in Matthew chapter 5. Concerning adultery. He said you don't commit adultery by actually committing the act. You commit adultery by thinking. So the record is placed there when you think. Then he goes ahead to tell us that every idle word that we speak we will be held accountable to it. So even what we speak is recorded down. Then what we do is also recorded down. That is very important for us to understand. And it should help to bring an awareness that every day of our lives there is something that is written down concerning us. The third set of books. This is the other book that we see written here. The Bible says the other book. Which is the book of life. It is the book we have encountered before. Which is called the Lamb's book of life. Now this book contains the names of those who have placed faith in Jesus Christ. So when we take this and place it in the context of the sin that we just saw, John has taken us from earth and is back in heaven. Actually, this text does not need interpretation. Because it is straightforward. So John sees the throne of God. And there is one seated on this throne. And what he sees is mirroring what he has seen before in Revelation chapter 4. Except that there are a few things that change here. In Revelation chapter 4, verse 3, there is something we see here. We see the rainbow, which speaks of the promises of God. In chapter 20, we don't see the rainbow because there are no promises to be made. This is judgment day. So there are no promises for the future. And here, John does not talk about the rainbow. He doesn't talk about peals of thunder. He doesn't talk about rumbling. There are no voices of warning. There is nothing threatening that we see in Revelation chapter 4 verse 5. Why? Because at this point in time, God is not warning about anything more. What we see here is silence. Silent 
righteousness. What we see here is holy purity. What we see here is ultimate judgment. It is the moment of reckoning. And here seated on the throne is Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, now standing in his office as the judge. At this moment, the judgment is according to what everyone has done. So why what everyone has done? Because the deeds reveal the heart. We have discussed before and I've told you it is a matter of the heart. Jesus said out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks. So basically, the heart is very important because it drives our actions. So every action that you see has a heart behind it that has thought and contemplated and finally come to Put this into execution. Jesus puts it this way in Matthew chapter 12. If we read from verse 35 to verse 37, here is how the Bible puts it. Jesus says that a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. Two things come to light here. On either side there is treasure. There is treasure for good and treasure for evil. And each of these brings out of. So what comes out springs from an abundance that is somewhere within the heart. And it is against this that he goes on to say, I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. So here, men are lined up or will be lined up to give an account of the words that they spoke. Today, I hear a lot of people saying, uh, the Lord said to me this, when in actual fact, it is not, it is their mind that spoke. Don't let that which comes out of your mind be a portion to God. Better say this is what I think. I feel this impressed upon my heart. And let it remain there. But don't let it be that safe, the Lord. Because if it is not from God, it is idle. And you will give an account. For he goes on to say, For by your words you will be justified. And by your words you will be condemned. Words to think about. What do we see in the text? In the context of what John reveals to us? John shows us Jesus and he says 
there was no place for kingdoms. The heaven and earth fled away from his face. What is the implication or the message that we draw from there? You see, we live in a day when all we are thinking about, what most people think about is developing kingdoms. It is developing structures. It is having things that we think will last for all, all time. But this tells you that whatever we are building, if it is not spiritual, in the face of Jesus at judgment, it will flee. It will roll away. There will be no place for earthly kingdom in an eternal heaven. So imagine for what you have strived all your years. And it rolls away in the face of the judgment of Jesus Christ. The question is, was it worth the sweat? Was it worth all a lifetime of travail? Was it what God had ordained for you to do? So don't be swayed by the praise of men. Strive to have only one audience. And the audience is the Lord Jesus Christ. And what do we see gathered before the throne? Gathered before the throne of majesty are the dead. And the Bible says both great and small. <laughs> All dead gathered before the throne, both great and small. No classification. It is not a case of first class and second class. Both of them but now I'm, the Bible says we be gathered before the throne. So there is no case of ushering of taking people of importance ahead of those who don't seem to be that important. Now think about it. The no, things that we hold so important. In the day of judgment, status is not an issue. Your, your qualifications are insignificant. Before majesty, every achievement dwindles. What matters there is what we have done for the cause of Christ. What we have done for the sake of the gospel. What we have done aligned to the purposes of God for our lives. I want you to think of that. But why judge the act? Because our deeds or our actions reveal what we believe. So if you believe in Jesus Christ and a follower in Jesus Christ, what you do reveals that. Haven't you found someone who does something and you are like, no. There is something about your life that is different. And often the question somebody asks, are you a believer in Jesus Christ? Why? Because there is a sort about your life 
that brings flavor, that brings flavor wherever you go. There is a light about your life that should permeate the darkness around you. If that is not happening, you need to get back to the cross. You need to get, get back to the very beginning and allow the Lord to work, work in you and use your life to be a channel through which he reaches other people. Why? Because our deeds are stored or archived in God's library. The record of every life at the judgment seat of Christ would be made known to all. So whatever is done in the dark that people don't see, there is the day of reckoning when the intents of the heart will be brought to light. When that which you are hiding the dark side that people don't see will be brought for light, to light. Here we learn something also. That if your name is in the book of life, then your deeds are righteous. The point is this, that those names, those whose names are in the book of life, are the only ones who can do righteous deeds. Such deeds are done by the power and the urgency of the Holy Spirit. And not by you, the person yourself. It is the Holy Spirit in you who aids you to do the righteous acts. So all the others that are not done through the agents of the Holy Spirit, those are works of the flesh. And those are burned with fire. It is only the righteous deeds that will remain. This is what Paul tells us in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 15 to verse 19. I want us to open there and read because we have something very interesting to see here. The Bible says for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Listen to what he's trying to say. Everything that we are laying down, if the foundation is not Jesus Christ, then it is a wrong foundation. I happen to see somebody construct a house. And over the time, it began to develop a crack. So he brought in an, an engineer to inspect and see what he can do. After he had looked at it, he said, we have to bring this structure down. So he said, why? He said, because the crack is in the foundation. So if we try to remediate it at this point, it will only be temporary and the house will crumble again. So why? Because the crack was in the foundation. So here Paul is saying, we cannot lay any other foundation. Christ 
Christo. is our firm foundation. And he says, now if anyone builds, listen to what is happening. The foundation has been laid. And that foundation is Jesus Christ. Forget those who have rejected him. Those are not the ones we are talking about here. Those ones there are Acts, their deeds are unrighteous. Because a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. We have seen that before. Now we are looking at those where the foundation is Jesus Christ. He's saying it doesn't end at the foundation. God cares how you build. On this foundation that is Jesus Christ. I hear a lot of people saying, as long as I'm said, wait a minute. Not so fast. This is what the Bible says. It says, now if anyone builds. Pause a moment here. Now, if anyone builds. So, irrespective of your title, irrespective of your background, irrespective of your estate life, irrespective of your ministry, the Bible says, now, if anyone. So, it covers everybody. Built on this foundation. And he begins to list the materials. He lists gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw. Each one's work will become clear. Whatever you use to build on that day, it will become clear. Why? Because Jesus says the day will declare it. Yes, The day will bring it to open. Everyone will see it. Everyone will know what the motive is. Why? Because it will be revealed with fire. So the day will determine what material you have been using all along. And it says the fire will test. Each one's work of what sort it is. What material are you using? God's fire is going to test the work. And he says, and if anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. So the reward here is based on whether your work survives. After the test by fire. And it says, and if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss. So there will be a moment where people who think they have gained everything will suffer loss. And it says, but he himself will be saved. Yet so are through fire. You don't want to build on this. There is a foundation, Christ. We need to care how, what material we are using to build. Because the material will determine the reward. But John talks about the other book. And he says, and the other book is open. 
nti nachi nacho chibikudwa and if your name is not found in the book of life. Basically, what they are saying, whatever deeds you have done, they are evil. So what you have done, they may write a whole list, praise you as you are, they are sending you off, send obituaries, have everyone all over the world, have heads of state gathered, all that is useless. As long as your name is not found in the book of life, nothing matters hereafter. We may have a state funeral, we may have a budget set up for, for it. Even a public holiday may be declared in your honor. Still, it mounts up to nothing. Jesus put it this way. He says, what will it profit a man after you have gained the whole world and yet lose your soul? There is something more important in life than getting the recognition of the world. Your soul. Don't lose it. How do you ensure that you don't lose it? By having your name written in the book of life. So your acts, if your name is not written, they may look good. On the outside. But inwardly, from the heavenly perspective, all these works are tainted by selfish desires. They are tainted by self-centeredness. They are tainted by the desire to be popular. The desire to have power influence and recognition. Let me ask a question here. What is it that motivates you? Or why do you do what you do? Forget the grand answers that you have all to help humanity. Uh -uh. If there is no recognition whatsoever, would you still maintain the same attitude? When there is no one clapping their hands. When there is no one acknowledging for you for the job well done. Why do you do what you do? Think about it. Let's clarify this. Jesus in scripture. Yes, there is this account that is recorded in the Bible. He sends out the 12 disciples to minister in the different cities and towns of Israel. And as they go, they do what he sent them to do. They preach the gospel. They cast out spirits. They lay hands on the sick. And the sick get well. They drive out demons. And they have great victories. Demons are subject to them. And they come back to Jesus excited. Luke chapter 10. Luke Kumi, verse 20, Onyiri captures this scenario for us. And the Bible says that they came back excited that demons were obeying them. And Jesus responds. This is what the Bible says. And he said to them, do not rejoice over that. No. Don't rejoice because demons are responding. 
Tosa nyuka kubange mizimu jiku wudita. Ah ah. Don't rejoice because the sick are being healed. Tojisa nyukina muko banga abalwadde bawona. Should we lay hands on the sick to get well? Yes. Tuteke do kubasa ake mikono bawone. Should we drive out demons when we find them? Yes. Tukobe daimoni wana tojisa anga we wow. He says this is nothing you have done. Uh, uh, go, it is God who did it through you. You see, that's why he goes back to Matthew 7, 21 and he says, in that day many will come and say, Lord, Lord, we did this in your name. And he says, go behind me. Hypocrites, I never knew you. Cheva to gamba matayo musava vili mwe munti kuruna kolo banji vali janga bagambu kama tu koze mulimu gobino vili abagambe mude li mwe nava nafusi siva manyi. He says, this is why I want you to rejoice. Na gamba ye eno ye nsonge vale teda mwoku sanyuka. Back Luke chapter 10 verse 20. Muluka kumi unyiri wabi. He says, I want you to rejoice. Njaga na mwe musanyuke. That your name are written. In the book of life. That should be the reason to celebrate. That you are recorded in God's book of life. So this is the central question I need to ask. Is your name written in the book of life? You may say, I, I know I was baptized. I, I, I fulfilled all the ceremonies. That, that's not what I'm saying. I'm asking, is your name written in the book of life? Are you certain that once you leave this world, there is a blessed assurance that here is a record of your name in the book of life. This is what John tells us in his first letter chapter 5 verse 11 to 12. He says this is the testimony that God has given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. This life is not anywhere. It is in his son. And he says, he who has the son has life. And he who does not have the son of God does not have life. So life is not what you make it. Life is in Jesus Christ. You see, there is no one. The Bible tells us those that whose names were not found in the book of life were thrown in the lake of fire. Who previously saw that the devil had been thrown in the lake of fire. Previously, before that, we saw that the beast and the prophet were also thrown in the lake of fire. So, everyone that goes to the lake of fire, you go there because you have willed. That is what you have decided. When life came, you chose the local fire. You refuse the savior and have chosen the other choice. This is not talking about those who have not heard of the gospel. Because you may ask me, now how about those? This God will deal with according to the declaration in scripture. And you'll we'll find this declaration in Genesis chapter 18 verse 25 which says, we're not the judge of all 
the earth do right. The judge of all the earth will do the right thing. I am talking about you who is listening to us today. You who is watching us today. You have a choice to make. The ultimate issues of life are settled here. If your name is not written in the book of life, you don't have eternal life. If your name is written in the book of life, you enter into eternal life. If you refuse Jesus, then your ultimate fate is the lake of fire for all eternity. There is no purgatory here. There is no reprieve whatsoever. And this the Bible calls the second death. The second death. You die along with the devil, the beast, and the false prophet. Is that where you want to go? If the answer is no, in just a minute, you will make a decision for Jesus Christ. And your name will be written in the book of life. Let me pray with you. Commit your life to Christ. Believe in his salvation which he purchased for you at Calvary. He died and rose from the dead so that you don't have to die but you live for all eternity. Say, dear God, I am a sinner. I need a savior in my life. Today, I accept Jesus in my life as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe, Lord Jesus, that you are the Savior of the world. For long, I have relied on my ideas. For long, everything has been about me. For long, all my pursuits have been about my accomplishments. But Lord, today I come before you. I surrender everything to you. My heart, my mind, my body, and my soul. Take charge, Lord. Wash and cleanse me. Purify my heart. Write my name in the book of life. Thank you for saving me, Lord Jesus. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Empower me, Lord, to live for you, to live according to the plan and the design you have for my life. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, if you give your, you say those words from the bottom of your heart, you have been wonderfully saved. The Bible says you believe with your heart unto righteousness. And then you confess with your mouth unto salvation. You are now born again. There is that phone on the screen. Please call. Tell us what has happened to your life. And we will guide you into the next steps on this wonderful journey. Now I'm going to address that one. Who is saying, Pastor, I'm not going to hell. My life has already been surrendered. I am saved. True. But this should stay one. 
na hichi no chikusiku this should motivate you to be more concerned about the lost. Those that have not given their lives to Christ. Those neighbors of yours. Those relatives of yours. Those people that you inquire, you encounter in life. The people that have been good to you. You need to ask the question. Is your name are their names written in the book of life? If the answer is no, you need to reach out to them with this gospel of Jesus Christ. So until we meet again, let's embark on this challenge of reaching as many people as possible with the gospel of Jesus Christ so that their names get written in the book of life. Because if they are not, they become candidates to the lake of fire. So, preach this gospel in and out of season and let's make sure that as many people as possible have their names written in the book of life. So from Dominion Church, we are saying God richly bless you. Shalom. Till we meet again.